Hi Flosstube. My name is Chris and I'm the Camping Stitcher here on YouTube and on Instagram. And I am back for episode number 14. It is October 25th, 2022. And it's a really drizzly day. Um, I hope this works out because I've kind of had a day at work today. But I figured I'm a little late with this video so I'd give it a try. I have a little bit to catch up with, so I don't want to wait too much longer and have a ton. So thank you. If you are new here, welcome. Um, I This is primarily a, a, a channel about cross stitch. I do have other crafty interests, but mostly I talk about cross stitch. And at the end, there's a little camp camping story, campfire story that I'll warn you about ahead of time. And um, just show my whips and my haul projects I'm working on talk about plans, maybe share some other floss tubers with you that you probably already know about, but you never know. Anyway, I've had a busy two, almost two and a half weeks, gotten a lot of stitching in. Um, I actually had a finish and I have it here. I have stuff like all around me. It's just kind of ridiculous. But anyway, I am going to start with Oh, first let me start with thanking um, one of the commenters, Karen, Karen Cowgill. The mystery of the Steinbeck, 36 count Steinbeck I ordered has been solved. She said, um, she made a comment. She said, Liz Matthews, Autumn Cloche calls for 36 count Steinbeck. And it was laying right on my table. Literally, the pattern, the chart was right on my table. And I just never even thought to look at the charts I ordered, because that's what's going on with me lately. Um, but thank you, Karen. Solve the mystery, that's what it's for. I put a sticky note in there so that I won't forget and have to ask you guys again. But you came to my rescue. Um, also, I wanted to thank Jenny and Nancy, the Bougie Stitchers, for giving me a BFF shout out. Thanks, girls, I really appreciated it. It was nice. Um, so, okay. What have I been up to the last two and a half weeks? I have um, mostly FFO, which is needs explanation. I have an FO that I just finished this morning. Um, and I have a couple of things that I was working on and I have some haul. And uh, first I'll start with the mostly FFO. And I say mostly because it is mounted. I just don't know what I wanna put it on. So, I'll kind of show you. It is October's Party by Little House Needleworks. I'm sorry for the lighting. It is foggy outside right now. It's almost five o'clock and I do have a light box, but it's really hard when I've got three windows over there and they're just full of fog. Anyway, October's Party. This is my finish. I love how it came out. Um, and I say mostly finished because it's mounted, it's pinned, I have, I have it, it's ready to go. I just can't decide what I want to put it on, whether I want to, um, have my husband make a board or if I want to somehow make this board work. I, I just, I don't know. I think maybe I want, if I use this little board, I might actually want to paint it a different color and maybe distress it, but it's it's just a little chalkboard. Um, it's wall decor from Hobby Lobby, and I had it. I got it a while ago, so I don't know. I actually had it laying on the box for casting a spell, and it looked nice there too. So maybe I'm not really sure, but it's a it's a mostly FFO. It's it's like mostly FFO'd. Just can't decide. So if you have any suggestions put them down in the comments I'd love to hear them so that's October's party I have stuff everywhere um and then I finally finished the last little chart in casting a spell and I ran out of floss this is casting a spell blackbirds designs this is a stitch along I'm going to be honest, I don't know who 
I can't remember who originated it. So maybe it was Stitchy Linda, Marley Farm Girl, Chrissy. I know Sweet Care Stitcher was working on it. Ginger Shell just finished it. Came out beautiful. Um, I know a lot of other people were working on it. So my box is painted. I don't have it distressed. I don't have it waxed. And I ran out of the espresso bean and the pumpkin pie. And I used this, the cold fur fabric. So I ordered two more skeins of each of those so that I made sure I had plenty. And um, this was the last little chart I did. This is 30 count weeks and it's like the original weeks. I mean, uh, it's not as wide base. base. Hmm. Okay, so that's the chart the portion I finished this morning. It's the black cat. This was the little house. Oops, sorry. Oop. That's where I ran out of the pumpkin pie and the espresso bean. I mean, it, there's a lot. And the dark chocolate, I had plenty of. It doesn't take a lot of it, but I have to tell you, I had the dark chocolate for my Consider the Lilies and I need to find more and you can't find that. I don't know why but anyway I am going to see if I can finish these up sometime this week and get them in the box just under the wire for Halloween I did not do the pin cushions but maybe another time but that is ready to get finished and put in that box um, which is I think it looks really good in there. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think it was Chrissy, finally a farm girl. She, um, I think she made all of hers pillows. I think I'm going to make the four in the center of the box. Where did I just cut the chart? Okay. These four, I think I'm going, well, these six, let's count Chris. I'm going to mount on foam board. And these four, I'm going to make into pillows, I think and see what what's what see how that works out i don't mind mounting stuff i like i don't mind mounting stuff i pin i don't lace october's party this is pinned using Teresa vinette's kitten stitchers tutorial and on the back i just put um double-sided tape uh, it's acid free i just put it underneath here and put it down so I, I'm not the best leaser. I have a problem holding on to things. It just it skews all around when I try to lace. So pinning works out better for me, so I just stick with pinning. So those are my mostly FFO and FO. Um, I have a new start and I have some whips. So, um, but first I wanted to say, um, rewind. Thank you guys for all the comments that you made on the wolf story, the camping story about the wolf last time. Um, I really appreciate you telling me that you enjoy the stories. And I, I do give a warning so that if you're not interested in it, you can just head on over to the next floss tube that you want to watch. But it, it was really nice to read all the comments and I really appreciate them. So thank you for that. Um, my new start is... The item I was waiting for um, from the Homespun Facebook group. Now, I feel bad because it's no longer available, but it's what I'm working on. So this is um, was an exclusive for the Homespun Needlework Facebook group. It's called the Sampler for All Seasons. And it was it's this sampler and these um, pin, pin cushions. It came with... Um, the fabric for both all of that and it came with these little pins and the floss and that is for the the um, pin cushion that black but it came with all the threads and I have gotten the winter portion done of it which it's it's I think it's gonna be a pretty fast little sampler it was really fun and it that a knit oh my god I am I've had such a day 
It was really fun to stitch that. If I knitted it, it would be amazing. But the colors are so nice. And this is um, 36, count, 36 count Steinbeck. This is not what I ordered the Steinbeck for because this came with this. But I was like, I hope I didn't just order fabric. That was my main concern when I asked you guys that. I was like, did I just order fabric for a kit that had fabric in it? What am I losing my mind? But no, it was for the autumn cloche. Anyway, that was my new start. It was kind of cheating a little bit. It was haul, but I figured you guys wouldn't mind if I had a new star because this came on the 17th. I got home from work. It or had arrived. I made my cup of tea. I sat down in here. I got everything organized and I started it immediately. Jessica actually messaged me. She's like, when are you start? Oh, never mind. You're starting it now. So yeah, I couldn't wait. It was just, it looks just too much fun to wait. So that was that. Um, the other things I've been working on, I did a little bit more work on Stacy Nash's Butternut House Pin Keep. So I got some of this done and I'll be working on this a little bit more now since casting a spell is done. This is, hmm, I have, I don't know, you guys probably have seen this a million times. This is from Fat Quarter Shop. And this is actually my volume two. And I keep track of what uh, the projects are and what the fabric is and all the little necessary. So this is actually on Up in the Attic, 36 Camp by Fox and Rabbit. And it is all the cold fur except that yellow I talked about. I switched out the DMC 3828 for DMC 680 because the 3828 did not show up on this fabric. So the only places, that's where I made the switch. Those yellow numbers. The house is done in that color, so I figured it would be a nice match. So I did a little bit of work on that. We were away this weekend, so I'll get to that. That was a nice trip. What else did I work on? Oh, I did some fill-in sitting at the campsite when you're um, chit-chatting with your husband is a, a great, great opportunity to do some fill-in. And this has a lot of fill-in. This is Live on Little, Plum Street. And I did get the, that roof done. All the solid stitching in that roof right there. The dark brown and the grayish. And I started the fill-in in the water. This has a lot of fill in. This is great. I think this might be my um, inside stitching for a while because we'll watch some TV after dinner and I don't, I don't really have the concentration power. <laughs> this is done on 36 Affogato, by the way, Fiber on a Whim. I don't really have the concentration power to sit and work on something that needs that little pesky counting thing. So I'll fill in for something like that is great. I have another thing here and I don't know what I would do with it. Anyway. Oh, here it is. The other stitch I've been working on is the Strawberry Manor Sal from Teresa Kovic. This is so pretty. I, I just, I love her colors. So... Right now, I'm going to be working on this section, and I think, I don't know if there's one or two more sections left, but I did some more of the border. I filled in this whole area with the tree, that little tree, the berry basket, the flower, and the squirrel. Um, not sure if I'm putting the year in that cartouche. I think I'm going to, because I think it's just going to be a nice little remembrance of doing it in 2022, but, and I really can't figure out, like, I don't know about putting my initials there, but it's really coming out nice, and it's so much fun to work on. She just does such a great job with her charts, and the $20 that you pay for being a tier four Patreon is just so, you get so much for it. It's just amazing. Highly recommend it. So, 
I talked about that. I talk, I see I have notes. I didn't I did I write I wrote notes because hmm my brain is just not working right lately. Mashed potatoes. Oh, a couple other things I wanted to talk about before I got to haul. So jingle ball. I heard of this thing called Jingle Ball, and I was like, oh, wow, that's, I, I got some emails. Um, a lot of people or designers are taking part in it. So I signed up, and it is $10 to sign up to do it, and I think it's December 2nd, yes. The ball starts on December 2nd, and I think it goes... I don't want to say around the clock. I don't want to give you false information. But if you look up Jingle Ball, and I'll put the link in um, the description box, it's $10 to sign up, and a lot of the classes are full, but I think they're opening more classes, and uh, the designers will give a heads up so you can sign up. Um, but it's just an opportunity to get some exclusives and to talk and listen to the designers. And $10, I mean, I don't, I can't, I haven't been able to go to a retreat, so to me, this is like, being able to re to attend a retreat for ten dollars and and getting on some exclusive charts that you might not see otherwise and might not be available for a while. So Jingle Ball, look it up, ten bucks. I think it's worth it. Give it a shot. The other thing is, um, Ellen Reed is now designing charts, and if you go to Evertotes website, which I'll link below, you can get this fall is greater. Fight me. <laughs> this is awesome. And so I think she just put out another freebie too. I didn't get to print that out yet, but this is so cute. So she's now maximum cross stitch. She also has a floss tube maximum cross stitch power hour. Um, she's just, she's amazing. And of course she's um, in the Crush, Crush Dummies band. So she's got a lot going on and now she's designing. So check that out. Uh, the other thing, like maintenance stuff is, I'm gonna be having a little tiny giveaway at the end before the campfire story. And what else? Oh, my, I talked about this. Oh, what did I do with them? Oh, here they are. I talked about this in a couple couple of floss tubes ago, and a couple of you messaged me and said, well, is your husband going to make them and put them in the shop? Yes, he has. So these are floss winders, and they are available in our Etsy shop. And we've, I don't know, he, he made some cherry ones, so they may be listed next. I'm not sure if he's got any of these curly maples left. Um, well, obviously we do because I have two in my hands, but these are spoken for. Um, they're nine inches and they have a little uh, guideline to cut on. You wind your DMC floss on them. They, it fits between the little area right here. Um, I like it because all the strands are the same length nine inches so you can get a nice 18 inch length out of them and if you do the loop method it's plenty you can do two strands of ones whatever but these will be in our etsy shop um i'll link that below and that's like it for maintenance i am sorry for being all over the place this is like what a day anyway next stop um this haul so before I get to my hobby house haul, I just wanted to show you the one thing I got. I actually only had one thing come, and that is Teresa Kovitz's Halloween book. I just, I don't know, kept seeing everybody, and I had some FOMO, and I'm glad I followed the FOMO because, I mean, I don't want to show any charts, but... Look at that. Isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh. She just does such amazing... I, I don't know. Like She's overflowing talent or something. I just love her designs. But that big one, you could do the whole thing or you could do little snippets. You can make a drum. You can make something to go around a spool. 
I just so pretty very nice glad I ordered that and that came I had to well of course I had to order some floss because I'm the casting a spell thing and I couldn't I just couldn't see them traveling by themselves so I ordered this so that came from one two three stitch and then I went to Hobby House we go away every year for our anniversary so and we usually go to Rhinebeck, New York, and we haven't gone the last couple of years because of, you know, the plague. And I just, I really, I'm not up to the, the crowds. I'm really not. I, I, I think, if anything, I've become more introverted. But, I mean, I, I mean, I like talking to people and hanging out with them and stuff, but this, I just knew there was going to be a tremendous crowds. So, and I was right. I heard it from a couple of people that went, and it was very crowded. So, when my husband said, do you want to go back up to that place in New York? I was like, yes, please. So, we went we camped on, well, not on. We camped right across the street from Lake Ontario at Webster State Park. And on the way to set up camping, he, we have to go kind of by the store. So, he was like, let's stop now. So, that's what we did on Thursday. And let me tell you so much fabric i just <sighs> so i picked up some lollybrock because how could you not look at that i don't know if you can really see it oh. it's just so pretty this is by tabby cat tabby cat tabby cat tabby cat and I think this was special, was it special for the retreat they just had with Nicola? It might have been. I could have that wrong. Don't quote me on that. Just say she was blabbering, if I'm wrong. And I also picked up Needle and Flax Hemingway. This is, I. Uh, you just, sorry about the, it's just so pretty. I think she said that was a new color. I don't think so, though. I thought I heard it before. Rachel, you let me know. And because I was there, I said, is it possible to pick up the exclusive that you have with Hands Across the Sea? And Dave said, sure. Do you want the fabric, too? And I said, sure. So I picked up. Florence Mary Dickinson. That is so. I wish. Oh, look, you get the reflection. Look at that. It's gorgeous. I am going to kit it up with DMC so I didn't get the threads. But I did get the called for Creme Brulee by Tabby Cat. And I, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> I don't know which section I'm going to use for it. But I am not afraid of that coloring there. I think it's going to look awesome. I did pick up two patterns, but somehow they didn't make it into my bag. So I'm waiting for them to get back to me on that. I also picked up some Lady Dot Creates the Velveteen for Witch in, my, Witch in the Garden. Witch in my Garden. And I did pick up some chenille. And then because... I did pick up one. I went through on my polywog that because when I was there in May, they hadn't, they were just about to open up the Woolworks. They hadn't quite gotten it um, opened yet when I was there, but it's open now and I had to go next door and check it out because why, why not? So I did. I got, um, I got a little little applique kit. Primitive gatherings. Because birds. I mean, it comes with everything. So I'm going to be doing that for our kitchen table. Because birds. It's so pretty. And I really, we spent some time chatting with the store manager over there, Tammy. Tammy Ruiz. And she... Now, if you haven't watched 
two needles pulling thread. Missy Timberlake was just there a week, I think it was a week before I went there, and she showed these um, table runners with toweling. Now, Tammy had them there, but she had, she's designing. She's going to design something um, she's working out, and she said they'll be coming out shortly, I'm hoping. But she had the blue toweling. I know Missy got the red toweling. I don't know if she ordered the blue. But she had it with snowflakes. And that's that's up my alley. So I'm waiting for that to... I'm checking the site. Waiting for that to come up and see. When that comes out, I'm ordering it. Because that would be perfect for my kitchen. And I also saw, finally... I was at some place where I saw this and I picked it up because I didn't want to ship it. I was just nervous. Finishing my tea. I was just too nervous about... I know they put it in bags and stuff, but I was there and we had the camper and I knew I can get it home safely. So, I just have bad luck with liquids and shipping. And... Uh, that if you could ever get up to Hobby House, it's so worth the trip. It's about where we are in Northwest New Jersey. It takes us about four and a half, five hours to get up there, but we take our time. It's not like we're in a mad rush and we were spending the weekend and Thursday it was kind of a little colder, but we were snug. Uh, the campers got heat and it's well insulated. So like even even running the little heater, we try to run a little heater instead of using the propane. Even with that, it got a little war too warm. And then it warmed up the rest of the weekend. It was like almost 70s and sunny and stuff. So I think Thursday was the coldest night we had up there. And we were kind of a little hesitant. Like we booked it and we saw like the weather reports. I think the week before it had been really, really cold. Well, not really, really cold, but colder. And... My husband and I were like, what were we thinking? Like going up that far north and <laughs> on the lake. But the lake was beautiful. I think the day we came home on Sunday, it was like glass. People were out there kayaking. It was just really nice. Beautiful area. Pittsburgh is about a half an hour, 25 minutes from where we were camping. Um, there's a lumber yard right next door. My husband was in there buying lumber woodworker and we I think we took a little drive around I think on Friday and I didn't find any more I know there's another uh cross stitch store up there but I I don't we didn't go near uh Canadagua 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 I think I had been it the last time I'm not really sure it was kind of a blur but Really enjoyed the trip up there. Hobby House is so worth it. it it's just so, they've got so much. It's worth it um, trip. And the last time we were up there, I went twice because I just felt like overloaded and I didn't see everything I wanted to see. But had a great time. Happy anniversary. Um, I don't think I did too badly with the haul because I could have done worse, but <laughs> trying to be good. The other thing is, okay, who I've been watching for the last couple of weeks. There's a couple of floss tubers I wanted to mention. Um, Carolyn sees Zook Stitches. I actually found her from watching um, Jen's Stitching Niche. And she's really, really enjoyable. Just give her a, I'll link her below. And Two Needles Pulling Thread, uh, that's Missy and Kathy. And as I said, Missy was just up at Hobby House. Her daughter got married. And I think Kathy's daughters get married soon. Congratulations. Um, I think we have to coordinate that better next time, though, Missy. If you're, when you're in the area, we can meet up. And who else? Uh, Amanda Alba Stitcher. She was back with a new floss tube. Uh, she had a little bit of surgery, and I think she's doing okay now. It was good to see her back again. And Karen, the monogamous, the recovering monogamous stitcher, she's uh, really enjoyable. She does a beautiful quilting and just really nice stitching. So give them a check out. I'll link them all below. 
um, my plans. Oh, the other thing I've been working on is my grandson's stocking, and I am on the last page, and I'm at least halfway through that. So pretty soon we're going to be doing beads, back stitching, and ooh, putting it together. Uh, you guys gave me a lot of suggestions for tutorials to watch. I did watch Vanna's. And there were a couple other ones I'm going to watch, and I did look up some more. My thing is, I'm, I'm undecided. I don't know about that heavy cording, putting that around the edge of the stocking. So I have to really... I made stockings for both of my sons when they were little. And they were dimensions kits. This is a Stony Creek. So the dimensions kits, I think back then, were a little bit more... Um, simple not, I mean they were they weren't as involved as this stocking and I'm not sure like oh, the piping thing it looks like a lot of bulk it looks like a lot of bulk so if you've done uh, finishing a stocking and you you know you think it's it's a necessary thing let me know I kind of think it's more decorative I don't think it's gonna add I think I'm gonna line it so I don't think it's gonna add um, much more stability and I think it's going to add some bulk and I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm that talented to do that uh, I'll think about it I'm looking at it it's like sitting on my case stand right now so that'll be be stitching on that in a little bit I kind of have to get I kind of want to make it my daily stitch now because I want to get that finished I have I have a timeline I'm trying to follow so other plans after I spend a lot of time on the stocking is Butternut House. I think I can get that done and catch up on Strawberry Manor until the next uh, part comes out. And I think that's about it. This is, I have a lot to show, but it, it seems kind of short. Oh, before I switch to the camping story, I am going to have a giveaway. I am, I think, four subscribers away from 1500 and I thought I was looking through my patterns the other day and uh surprise I have two of these so cute so I will have a giveaway it'll be the, the next floss tube floss tube number 15 and leave a comment below and just use the word brave and I will pick and send this out to somebody. Okay, so now's the time I'm going to tell a camping story. So if you guys are not interested or care less about camping, <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, click the bell if you want to get notified of the next floss tube that I'm super speedy. I guess I'm at 33 minutes, so... I just I always think I have so much to say. But I you know, a couple of you did say that you appreciated that my floss tubes weren't super long. So thank you for that feedback. So now's the part with the camping story. So this kind of foggy, rainy weather reminded me of one of the first times my husband and I did go camping. We used to live on Long Island, New York, and you could go camping out there on the beach and I, you know, I think this was, gosh, 38 years ago. We've been married 38 years. So we decided to go camping one weekend, and we had a tent. He had a Bronco, so to get on the beach, you had to kind of, like, have certain things with you, let some of the air out of your tires, blah, blah, blah. So we did not have sand stakes, um... They recommend sand stakes, but they don't say you have to have them. That's a really good reason why you should have them. Anyway, we went camping with our friend Dave, and he had this little tiny canvas pup tent, and we had this pretty big nylon modern tent. And we set up the tent, and my husband stakes it down, and it's you're in sand. So Dave, with his little tiny pup tent canvas, has these huge sand stakes. And us with this bigger tent, we have these little tiny, like not tiny, but what, 10 inch stakes? So we stake it down. Hanging out, have fun, go to sleep, wake up the next morning. 
and it is whipping out. It's raining and the wind is howling and you could hear the surf. I mean, of course we were pretty far up the beach so we didn't have to worry about the surf or anything. And I looked at my husband and, and I said, this, this isn't going to blow over, is it? And no sooner did I get those words out of my mouth that a big gust came and we, the tent and everything in it, our suitcases, our sleeping bags, us, everything we had in the tent went rolling down the beach. And there Dave sat in his canvas pup tent looking out his window. Didn't budge. Stayed put because he had sand stakes. And we went tumbling down the beach and got beat to heck in the tent as we were rolling down it. So, if you ever go camping on the beach, make sure you have sand stakes. That's the moral of that story. And that's it for today. So thanks for watching. Um, I am getting a new iPad, so now I won't be doing this, looking over here, when I should be looking over there, because the new ones have the camera right up there. So, and hopefully I can figure out the microphone situation, because of course once I figured that out, now it's a different power thing. It's not a lightning connector, it's a USB-C. Tips, leave them below. If you have the, a newer iPad with a USB-C, let me know what you use for a microphone. So that's it. That's all I've got. Um, hope you're doing well. Hope you're getting all the stitching in you want. And I will see you in about two weeks, maybe a little shorter, because I'm going to try to get back on um, doing this on the weekend. So thanks for watching and stitch away. Bye.